What's up, my name's Jason and today I'm going to be taking you through a tutorial on how to create a pixel art background. And then we're going to go ahead and animate that background for your game. Now this is a segment from my course on how to create pixel art. So if you're interested in enrolling, you can go ahead and click on the link in the description or you can click on the little tab at the bottom left corner of your screen. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Now let's go ahead and create the background for our game. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to create a brick pattern that we can use within our background. So I've created a new document that's 20 pixels wide and 10 pixels tall. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill it in with this color of purple. There's its color number right there. So I'm just gonna fill in my whole document with that color. Then I'm going to find a highlight color for that color. So I'm going to come up just a little bit. About there should be good. And I'm going to come up towards the warmer side. So way up there. Hit OK. And now I can go ahead and using my pencil tool, I'm going to brush in a top highlight like so. Next, I'm going to reselect that color. And I'm going to find a shadow color for it. So I'm going to come down to about there. And then I'm going to bring down my color towards the cooler side, which is the blue side. And now I can fill my shadow side in, which is the bottom side. Next, I'm going to select an even darker version of this color. And I'm going to fill in this bottom side like so. And then putting my brush at a 50% opacity, I'm going to fill in these corners. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to add some texture to this brick. So with this lighter color right here, we're going to go ahead and brush in at 50% opacity some dots on our brick. We want to make them look as random as possible. Next, we're going to go ahead and select this lighter purple color and we're going to add the highlight on each one of these spots. And these highlights are going to make it look like these are holes in our brick. Not huge holes, but just tiny little um, texture holes. Great. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to add some more texture by adding a new layer. And just like we did before on our wooden crate, we're going to add some black texture spots on this. Make sure your brush is at 100% and we can go ahead and start painting in some random texturing onto our brick. Great. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to change our layer type to overlay and then we're going to bring our opacity down all the way down to about 13% should work well. And then we can go ahead and switch our color over to white and add in some white texturing. Next, we're going to go ahead and round out these corners on our bricks because once we get these all lined up together, they're going to look really funny if they're super square. So I'm going to come back down to my first layer and I'm going to start painting in, whoops, make sure we select this darker color and we can start painting in some more rounded edges like so. And over here, we might want to grab a lighter color so maybe like that and paint around the edge of it. Same with over here, might paint that in lighter and that in. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing for the highlight side. So I'm going to select this darker version of the purple and I'll add one in the corner there, maybe one in the corner there. Next what we can do is we can put our brush opacity at 30% by hitting the number three on our keyboard and we're going to paint in some very light highlighting on these corners, like so. Let's do the same thing for the shadows. So we're going to select our shadow color. And using our brush at 30%, we can go ahead and start painting in some darker shadows in these corners. Great. Next, what we want to do is we want to make the transition between this dark shadow and the mid color 
a gradual transition. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint with our shadow color at 50% on top of this blue. Then we're going to select that color. And then coming back to our brush and putting that 100%, we're going to go ahead and randomly paint at the bottom of our brick like so. We'll do the same on the side. And now let's do the same for our highlight. So we're going to paint at 50%, select that color, come back to our pencil, put it at 100%, and then we can go ahead and paint in that gradual change from one color to the other. Now I'm noticing right here and right here, there's not much of a gradual change between the two colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this shadow color, and then I'm going to paint at 30% like so, right there, right there, and right there. I'm gonna add one over here also. Great, now we can go ahead and create our pattern. So I'm gonna select both my layers and merge them together. Then I'm gonna go ahead and enlarge my canvas so I can put more bricks on it. So I'm gonna come up to Image, come down to Canvas Size, and we're gonna move this little ball to the corner, and we're gonna make the width 40 pixels and the height 20 pixels, so doubled. And then using my magic wand tool, which is this tool right here that looks like a wand, I'm gonna go ahead and select this area, then hit delete. So now that's transparent. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my grab and move tool and holding down alt, I'm going to click and drag this over and it makes an automatic copy of my brick. I'm just gonna position it to the right of it, like so. Then I'm gonna do this once more, only I'm gonna drag this new copy down between the two of them so it's centered and I can let that go and then we'll move another one over here and we'll grab another one move it over here like so so now we have our brick pattern let's go ahead and save it out as a pattern so we're gonna come up to edit come down to define pattern and we're gonna call this pattern brick wall Great, so now that's been saved out as a pattern. Let's go ahead and create a new document now for our background. So we'll go new. And our new document is going to be 350 pixels wide and 197 pixels tall. So what we wanna do now is we want to create a new layer. And on this new layer, we're going to create a marquee selection at the bottom like so and we want it to be relatively short. Then we're gonna to come to our paint bucket tool and up here where it says foreground, we want to change that to pattern. And now that allows us to select our patterns. So I'm gonna select our brick pattern. And now what I can do is I can fill that powder, pattern in down here in our selection, like so. It's a pretty cool tool. Now let's go ahead and delete this top row of bricks because it kind of got cut off. Next, what we want to do is we want to add a floating elevation up here of bricks. So I'm going to create another marquee selection and I'm going to fill that in with our brick pattern. And then what we can do is anything that gets cut off, we can go ahead and delete away by selecting it with our marquee tool, then hitting delete. We'll do the same for the top. Great. Now let's do this once more. So over here, I'm gonna add a second level and I'll fill that in. Then I'll go ahead and delete away whatever I don't want. Now I'm noticing over here, this brick is getting cut off really short. So I'm going to just go ahead and completely get rid of that. Next, what we wanna do is we wanna round off all these corners so our bricks don't just look like a flat panel of bricks. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in there and using my erase tool, I can go ahead and erase away areas like so. So in between every brick, I'm going to erase one pixel. And if you'd like, you can even go three pixel, whoops, you can go three pixels across and one pixel up. Now let's go ahead and do it to our other elevation.
great. Now lastly, we need to go ahead and paint in some new shadows and highlights over here because where the brick got cut in half, there's no highlights or shadows. So let's start with our highlights. So I'm gonna select this highlight color. Then I'm gonna go ahead and brush it on like so. Then I'm gonna select another highlight color, this darker one, and I can add a little bit more texture into my highlight. Then we can do the same thing for our shadow. So I'll select my shadow color and add in some more shadow in there. Oops. Then I can select a lighter shadow color and add in some more texture. Great. Now over here I notice that we have some shadow next to our highlight. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my marquee tool and just select those pixels and delete them. Then we can come up here to our other brick elevation and we're gonna do the same thing. So I'll select my shadow color, paint that in. Then we can select a lighter color of the shadow and add some more texture. Now there wasn't much color difference between those two colors, so I'm going to select a darker shadow color and add that in. And then we can add our gradual transition color between our brick color and our shadow. And then let's do our highlight. So I'll select a highlight color, add that highlight in. And we can select another color from our highlight and paint some texture in. Great. Well, that brings us to the end of this lecture. In this lecture, you learn how to create patterns that you can fill spaces in. And these patterns will repeat themselves over and over again within that space. I hope you found this lecture useful, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Okay, let's go ahead and add in that sky and mountains. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come down to our background, and then we're gonna select a color for our background. So we want it to be blue since it's going to be the sky, and we're gonna have it somewhere around here in the blues, and so then we wanna come down to the blues. And we'll go ahead and hit okay and fill in our background. Make sure you switch from pattern to foreground so you can fill with color. So now we have our sky. Next, let's go ahead and create some clouds. So I'm gonna create some clouds by selecting the color white, then using my pencil tool and bringing my brush size up. I'm gonna go ahead and paint in some pretty wispy clouds. Now that white might be too much so I'm gonna bring this down more towards the blue side, like so. Now let's try that, that looks much better. Now these clouds don't have to be perfect. Most of them aren't gonna be seen, they'll be covered by things on the background. But just get something in there that can represent clouds. Then we're going to add a new layer and we can start painting in our mountains. Now these don't have to be perfect. You can always add and take away with the erase tool and the paint tool. So just go ahead and start blocking those mountains in however you'd like them to look. And now with my erase tool, I can go ahead and start shaping those mountains. Like so. All right, that brings us to the end of this lecture. So you just saw there how quickly I created that background and it shouldn't take too long for you either. Once you start to get the hang of creating digital artwork, it goes super fast.
Next, we're going to create some grass on top of our bricks. Now, these bricks might be part of some ancient runes, and that's why there's grass and plants and stuff growing on top of it. So before we do that, let's get organized and label our layers. So starting with our background, we're going to go ahead and call that sky. We'll call the next layer mountains. And then we'll call the last layer bricks. Then let's go ahead and put our mountains and the sky in a folder. We'll call that background. And then we can put our bricks in a folder. And we're going to call this folder foreground. Now let's create a new document. So we're going to come up to file, new. And our new document is going to be 40 pixels wide and 16 pixels tall. Whoops. Okay, and what we're going to do in here is we're going to create our grass pattern that we can apply to our background. So first off, let's add a new layer and let's delete this background layer. Next, let's select a green color for our grass. So I'm going to come somewhere down here and then come down to the greens. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a marquee selection like so and we'll fill that in with our green. Next, what we're gonna do is we're going to select our green color and we're gonna create a highlight color. So we're gonna come up like so, and then we're gonna bring it towards the yellow side since that's the warm side. And then we're gonna brush in a line across our top, like so. Now let's reselect our green color and let's create a shadow color for it. So we're going to come down and then we're going to come up more towards the blues. Now let's go ahead and paint in that bottom line. Next what we're going to do is we're going to start adding some random grass pieces hanging off the bottom like so. And we can also add some up here like this. Great. Now let's do the same for our highlight. So we're going to select our highlight color. And I'm going to use my move tool to nudge my grass down one pixel so I have more room up here. Next, I'm going to select my middle green color and I'm going to start adding some green into my highlights and my shadows just to give it some more random texturing. Great. Now what I want to do is I'm going to select my highlight color and I'm going to add an even lighter highlight on top of that. Just like so. We don't want this in every spot but every now and then we're going to add it in. Great. Now lastly what we want to do is we want to add a shadow to this grass. So when it hangs over our bricks we can see a cast shadow. So I'm gonna add a new layer. I'm gonna bring that down beneath my first layer. Then I'm gonna select the shape on my first layer by holding control or command if you're on a Mac and clicking my thumbnail. And now you see it's selected my grass shape. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in with black. Make sure you're on your bottom empty layer when you do this. So I filled it in, you can't see it yet because it's behind it. But if I use my grab and move tool and nudge it down with my arrow keys, now you can see it. So I'm going to bring it down about four pixels, maybe one more. And then I'm going to bring down the opacity to 50% or about 50%, like so. 
Next, what we need to do is we need to crop away anything that's unwanted here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my crop tool, which is this tool over here underneath the lasso tool. And then I'm going to go ahead and drag our bottom crop up to our bottom pixels. And we'll hit enter. So now that's cropped to the exact size of our grass. Now we can go ahead and create this into a pattern. So I'm gonna come up to edit, come down to define pattern, and we're gonna call this grass. Great, so now we have our grass pattern. Now let's go back into our background document and we're gonna add a new layer above our bricks. Then using my marquee tool, I'm gonna to make a selection across the top of my bricks like so. Then using my fill tool and making sure that I change my foreground to pattern and then selecting my grass pattern, I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in. Now we get a whole bunch of grass patterns, so what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and select away everything we don't want. So using my marquee tool, I select that, then hit delete. Then I'll select this down here and hit delete. Then I'm gonna use my move tool and the keys on my keyboard to push this down like so. So now we have some nice grass across the top of our bricks. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select our grass. Then I'm gonna switch over to my grab and move tool. And using the key Alt on my keyboard, I'm gonna drag and make a copy of that. And I'm gonna bring this up to the top of these bricks, like so. Then we can unselect out of that. And what we can do now is we can go ahead and select this right here and delete it and select all this away and delete it. Now it's important to make sure that you leave a little bit hanging over the edge and we're gonna come back and make that look much better here in a second. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing for our top platform. So I'm gonna select this grass here, then hold down Alt and drag it over like so. And now using my marquee tool, I'll go ahead and select and delete away the edges of this. Great. Now let's go ahead and zoom in here to these edges and using my erase tool, I can go ahead and erase away the shadow that's hanging over the edge of my brick because there wouldn't be shadow being cast onto air. Then we can go ahead and move over to the other side and do the same thing. Now this edge is looking really hard, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take some of that out like so. Now let's do the same for our top platform. Now, if your grass isn't looking right or you don't like the coloring of it, what you can do is you can bring up the hue and saturation on this layer and change it. So the way you do that is by hitting Control U on your keyboard, and now you can change the hue of your grass. So you can change it to any color you like. You could change it to purple. You could change it to orange or red or whatever you want. Now, I like my color, so I'm gonna leave it. Another thing you can do is you can change the saturation by bringing it up or if it's too saturated, you can bring it down. But I'm gonna leave mine where it is. You can also change the lightness or the darkness of your grass. So those are just things to help you out while you're creating your background. If there's things you don't like about it, you can go ahead and change it pretty quickly and easily. So let's go ahead and hit okay. All right, that brings us to the end of this lecture. So in this lecture, you created a second pattern, which was the grass pattern and you learn how to create a pattern that you can stretch all the way across something, all you have to do is just take away all the extra pattern that you don't want. You also learn how to add a shadow to your pattern, which was this shadow down here underneath the grass. Well, thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture. Now we're gonna add some mountains to our background. We're gonna add them to the left side of the screen, and they're gonna be somewhere between our foreground and our background. And because of that, we're gonna see more detail on them. We're gonna see some trees on them and we're also going to see some waterfalls. And we're going to take these waterfalls and animate them to look like they're actually flowing. So it's gonna be pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do is we're going to close down our foreground folder. And then we wanna add a folder underneath our foreground. We're gonna call this folder Waterfall Mountain.
Next, what we're going to do is we're going to add a new layer in there. Then we're going to select our background mountain color. And then we want to darken that color somewhere about there. Now over here, you can see the difference between our current color, which was the mountain color, and our new color. So that's a pretty useful tool. We also want to bring our color down more towards the blues. So somewhere in there. And now I'm going to go ahead and start painting in what I think I want my mountains to be shaped like. So it doesn't have to be perfect, just like our other mountains. We're just going to start painting it in, and then we can come back and erase away anything we want to erase. Then using my erase tool, I can go ahead and start erasing away so I get the shape that I want. Perfect. Next, what we want to do is we want to add two new layers above this. Then we're going to select both our layers, and we're going to turn those into clipping masks by coming up to Layer, then coming down to Create Clipping Mask. So now those are both clipping masks to the shape we just created. So anything we paint within these layers is not going to be seen outside of that shape. So starting on our first bottom layer, we're going to create a highlight color. So we're going to come up like so. We don't want to come up too much because we don't want the background to be too noticeable and have too much contrast. Then we're going to bring our color down more towards the green side. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start painting in the form of our mountains. So let's go ahead and zoom in there. And what we're going to do is we're just going to start painting in like so. What we're trying to do is show the form of our mountains. The way we're doing this is imagine if there's a light source coming from this side and what it's doing is it's hitting the sides of these mountains so we need to add some highlight in. We'll do the same on this mountain and you really just have to start using your imagination to imagine where that light is hitting on the mountains and what its form looks like and the form is just the shape of the mountain. Great. So now that we know where our light is coming from and the basic shapes of our mountain range, we can go ahead and start adding in some form to the inside of our mountain. So for example, over here, I might add in some form like that. And so now that just added another level of depth to our mountain. Now over here, I'm thinking there's going to be a waterfall that comes out like so. And that's why I'm adding this um, piece of the mountain in. We can do the same over here. I'm going to start painting in sort of like steps because these steps will allow for us to do some interesting things with our waterfalls. Then over here, I can add in some highlight like so, and that kind of gives some form of some sort of rock formation. And then over here, we can even add kind of some, some sort of like small steps. And on this rock, I'm going to add some more of this curving rock formation. And then let's add a little bit over here. Awesome. Now, this doesn't look good or perfect by any means at this point. What we need to do next is we need to start adding some more, some more highlight to the faces of our rocks. So I'm going to bring my brush size up, 
And what this means is we're going to, for example, over here, add a whole bunch of highlight, like so, because the sunlight might be hitting this whole face right here. So we need to add all that highlight to it. Same with over here. Now don't add too much because over here in this area and this area, we're going to fade that out so there's a nice transition between this highlight and this shadow color. But we just wanna fill in those basic areas of large faces of highlight. Awesome. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start adding in that transition between our light and our shadow. So the way we're gonna do that is by bringing our brush size down to one pixel, and we're just gonna start adding in some random dots, like so. And this is going to start creating that transition from one color to the other. And while you do this, you can also start to add a little bit more form to your rock. So like right here, for example, you'll see I'm adding a little bit more of form to it. Same with up here. You can add more form to it. And this is basically what we're going to do throughout our entire mountain range. This is going to take a little while, so I'm going to go ahead and time lapse this. If you don't want to watch it, go ahead and skip forward in the video. If you'd like, you can go ahead and stick around and watch this. Let's get started. Great. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my eraser tool and I'm going to sort of erase away a little bit of what's down here at the bottom because I want to try to create an effect of sort of a misty fog. We want it to look like these mountains are really far away. So the further they get to the ground, we're going to just kind of make the, the highlight dissipate. And the way we're going to do that is by basically doing what we just did with the highlight color, but doing that with the eraser at the bottoms of our mountains. All right, perfect. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up to our second clipping mask and selecting our highlight color, we're gonna go ahead and create an even lighter highlight. Bring it up to about there. And then we wanna come down more towards the yellow side. And now we're going to add in that second highlight. Now the second highlight is just going to basically be on the edge of all of our original highlights. So like so. Once we've kind of added it in along our edges, what we're gonna do is we're going to kind of dot that in also so there's a nice transition between our two highlight colors. And while you do this, you can also add some more formation into your rock, like that. You can do the same over here and add in some lines. But basically that's what we're gonna do across the entire mountain range. This is also going to take a little while, so I'm going to go ahead and time lapse this.
awesome. Now you'll notice while I was doing that, I turned off my foreground layer so I could see what was going on. And I noticed that this top area was messed up, so I had to fix that. And I'm also noticing in our background, our mountain has a weird thing right there. So I'm gonna open up my background layer and I'm gonna come to my mountain layer and then I'm just gonna go ahead and erase that real quick. Awesome, so I can close that back up now. So that brings us to the end of this lecture. So we learned how to create these cool mountains in the background and add double highlights on them to give them even more depth. Remember that the further back something gets in a background, the lighter you want it to be. This way your player can focus on what really matters, which is the character and not the background. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture. In this lecture, we're gonna add some trees to the top of our mountains. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to add a new layer on top of both of our layers. And we're going to find a green color for our trees. So I'm gonna select this blue color that our mountains are made out of. And then I'm just gonna bring that color down to the greens, somewhere in there, maybe darken it just a tad. Hit okay. And now I'm gonna start blocking in the shapes for my trees. So like everything else, it doesn't have to be perfect. We can always erase and add to it. But start painting in the shapes that you want your trees to be. It can be any shapes you like. Awesome. Now it's important to remember that if there's a mountain in front of another mountain, the trees on that mountain need to be covered by the other mountain. So right here we need to erase away these trees like so. And so now it appears like this mountain is covering those trees. We need to do the same over here and right here. Great. Next let's add two new layers above this and we're going to make both those layers clipping masks like we did with the mountains. So starting on our first layer, we're gonna find a highlight color for our trees. So somewhere in there, we'll come down towards the yellows. And now we can go ahead and start painting in our highlights. Now, when I'm painting in the form and highlights for trees, I like to think of them kind of like C's. Now, they're not all going to be C's, but they're gonna kind of be like C's. And when I say C's, I mean like C's in the alphabet, except they're gonna be backwards. Kind of like so. But sometimes you might get them more like this, or you might even get them more like that, all the way around. It just depends on how you wanna make them look. But that's basically the easiest way, I think, to think of the forms in your trees. So we're gonna go ahead and do this across all of our trees and then we're gonna come back and make them look a little bit better. Next what we're going to do is we're going to start adding that little sort of peppering effect along the edge, like so, and we're going to do that to all of our trees. That way it gives us that nice transition between our highlight and our mid-tone color.
Now, my highlights are looking a little bit too yellow for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up my hue and saturation for this layer by hitting Control U. And I'm gonna change my saturation, or my hue I mean, so that it's more green. So if I move it more that way, it's more yellow. So I'm gonna move it more in this direction. Probably about plus eight should be good, hit OK. Now let's add our next layer of highlight. So I'm gonna come up to my top layer, and then I'm gonna select my highlight color and come up just a little bit lighter and come a little bit more down towards the yellow. And we'll hit OK. And now we can go ahead and brush that in. And this is going to be exactly the same as brushing in the second highlight on our mountain range. So it's just going to be random patterns of this highlight color along the edge of our already made highlights. Great. Now I think my highlights look just a little bit too light, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both my layers and I'm just going to bring down the opacity until I think it looks good. So maybe about 75% would be better. Awesome. Now lastly what we want to do is we want to add a shadow from these trees. So right now we have a highlight on our mountains underneath the trees, but really to be more realistic, these trees would be casting a shadow on the mountain. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down to our highlight layers on our mountain, and we're gonna select both of those and then merge them together. So now those are one. Then using our erase tool, we can go ahead and erase any highlight underneath these trees. And we also wanna add that peppering effect so it's not just such a hard line from shadow to highlight. We want to do this underneath every single tree. Oops. Great. That looks much better. That brings us to the end of this lecture. In the next lecture, we're going to go ahead and add some waterfalls to our mountain range, and then we're going to animate them so they look like they're actually flowing. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture. Okay, now we can add in our waterfalls. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a new folder above our waterfall mountain folder. And we're going to call this folder waterfall. We can go ahead and close our waterfall mountain folder. And then we're going to add a new layer inside of our waterfall folder. And on this layer, we're going to paint in the base for our waterfalls. So I'm gonna select this blue color we have here and use that as my base to find my waterfall color. And so I'm gonna come up pretty light, somewhere around there. And then I wanna come more towards the blues. I think that should work well. So what we need to do now is we're just going to start painting in the shape of our waterfall. So our first waterfall is gonna come over something like this and then come splashing down And we want to make sure we fill in the entire space. Next, let's add in our other waterfalls. So I want to have some waterfalls coming down these steps. So I'm going to have it start here. Then I'll have another one fall down here. Then another one will fall down here. Then we can have one fall down over here. We can have one fall in here. And another one here. Then I'll add one right there. And then one final one, whoops. One final one right here. Awesome. So how do we animate these waterfalls? Well, it's actually pretty simple. 
what we're going to do is we're going to add four layers above this layer. Then we're going to select all of our layers that we just created and we're going to turn them into clipping masks. So we'll come up to layer and then come down to clipping masks. Then starting with layer one, we can start painting in our waterfall. So I'm going to select my blue color and I'm going to come up to almost a white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start painting in some of this flowing water. So starting at the top, it's going to be completely white and come down like so. And then what I'm going to do down here is I'm just going to start painting in basically zigzag stripes like that. It's very easy and it doesn't have to be perfect at all. Then we're going to do the same thing for our waterfalls over here. So starting at the top, we want to make sure that we have white. And then we're going to do the same thing. Just add those zigzag lines. And on these smaller ones, you could even just make them straight lines across. I think it's a little bit more interesting if you kind of add a zigzag to it. Great. We just created the first frame of our waterfall. So let's go ahead and turn the opacity down on this layer to about 25%. So now we can still just barely see it. Now we're gonna come up to our next layer and we're gonna paint in our next frame. Now the reason why we wanna still see a little bit of that waterfall is so we can paint in between where our original um, falling water was. So anywhere where it's darker, we're gonna paint in. So I'm gonna paint in there. I'm going to paint in there, I'm going to paint in there, and I'm going to paint in there. So basically we just inverted the pattern on the waterfall. And we also want to make sure that we still keep the tops of our waterfalls completely white. Now let's do the same thing over here. Let me turn up the opacity on our bottom layer real quick, just so you can see it a little bit better. So you can see I'm going to paint right into the top like so. So we get the top and then we want to get this darker area and this darker area and we want to leave the wider area blank. Do it again on this one. Awesome. Now let's come back down to our bottom layer and turn it back up to 100% so we don't forget. And then we can turn that layer off and then let's come back up to our layer we just created and we're gonna bring that down to about 30% opacity so we can see it for our next frame. And what we're gonna do is we're going to do the same thing on this third layer and now we're going to paint in these dark areas. So basically it's going to switch back to what our first frame sort of looked like. So just to explain this a little bit better, basically the position of these white zigzags are alternating from here to here and then back to here. And that's going to give us the illusion of running water. Don't forget to add the highlight to the top also. Great, now let's go ahead and turn the opacity back up on our bottom layer. Then we can turn that off. Then we'll turn down the opacity on our third layer. And then let's finish up with our last frame, which is our fourth layer. So doing the same thing again, so we'll paint like so at the top of our waterfall. And then we're gonna switch off. So now we're painting in the opposite area, which is the dark area.
Great. Now we just finished the last frame. So now what we can do is let's turn our bottom layer back up to 100% opacity. And let's turn all of our waterfall layers off. Now let's create a animation. So we're going to hit create frame animation. And then let's add four frames. So starting with frame one, we're going to go ahead and turn on this frame one layer. Then we're going to move on to frame two and we can turn on frame two and turn off frame one. Then we'll move on to frame three. We can turn off frame one and turn on frame three. Then we'll come to frame four. We can turn off our frame one and turn on our frame four. So now if we run through that, you'll see it looks like our water is moving now. So let's make sure that our animation is set to play forever. And let's change these from zero seconds to 0.1 seconds. And now let's play that and see how it looks. Awesome. All right, let's zoom out and see how it looks from far away. Now let's turn on our foreground so we can see how that looks. But we want to make sure that we turn it on on the first layer so it'll be on for all of our layers. Now let's play that and see how it looks. <laughs> Great, I think this looks pretty cool. Now if you'd like, you can go ahead and bring your character in to see how he looks with your background. So I'm going to do that now. And what we can do to see what our character looks like animated in our background is we can select all of our layers. I'm in my hover cycle animation right now, and I'm going to drag those over into my background. Now it's important to make sure that you add these to the top of all of your layers. And I'm going to add those into a new folder and call that character. Then I'm going to come to my frame one and I'm going to go ahead and move him. The reason why I go to my frame one is because anything that's done to frame one will be done to all the frames. So I'm going to leave him right there. Then I'm going to open my folder back up. And what we're going to do is starting on frame one, we're going to turn on our frame one animation. I'm going to move to frame 2 and we can turn on our frame 2 and turn off frame 1. And we're just going to continue to do this for each frame. All right, so now those are all on. Let's go ahead and play it and see how it looks. Awesome. So it almost looks like we're playing the game right now. That brings us to the end of this lecture. So in this lecture, you learned how to animate a waterfall, which is actually a pretty cool thing to do. You also learned how you can bring your character and his animation over into your background to see what it looks like. In the next lecture, I'm going to show you how to save this out into separate parts. So this foreground area is going to be a separate layer. This background is going to be a separate layer. And this mountain and skies are going to be a separate layer. And I'm also going to show you how to save this out with the animation. So thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture. If you enjoyed this tutorial, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I'll be sending many more videos like this your way. My name's Jason Batchelor, and thanks for watching.